Okay, this is Aaron with Exalted Lamb 1, and I'm back. Yeah, well, man, there's been so much going on, it's not an understatement whatsoever. Um, I'm, you know, of course, me and my wife are expecting, as I've shared in my other videos, twins. Um, and the, <laughs> the yin and yang twins, as I like to call them, or I believe the Lord showed me. Um, you know, if you're kind of religious about that kind of stuff whatever but god shows things to people in different ways so um and it's all, n nothing's ever super perfectly spiritual in the way he relates stuff i mean he uses almost anything um and he has been using all kinds of stuff to show what he's doing what he's going to do um and it's just been amazing it's been absolutely amazing in a lot of ways i've been waiting to bring this to you for a while here it's been almost two it's been about two months since my last video um i wanted to bring something out sooner but i just was not inspired completely to do it all basically a month after my last video um about, all the way up to a month after my last video i wasn't getting very much information and then i basically saw a video from um my brother aaron with redeemed 44 and i'll talk about that here in a minute but I first want to talk about, you know, again, with my twins that are coming with two boys, I've been talking about the dark and the light side of the coin and the two birds, the dark birth and the light birth that are going to happen at the same time. Now, I'm not saying, of course, that my children that are coming are one's going to be dark, one's going to be light, but it's a representation. It's basically the things that God's doing. I don't know what that's going to mean exactly. I don't know if when they come... It's going to be, the rapture is going to be right around that time and the revealing of the Antichrist around that time or at the same time or before, after, I don't know. So again, uh, time frames, I'm always speculating about. So I'm going to say that up front again. I'm speculating about time frames. What I'm going to share in this video is really, first, what I've seen, what the Lord's shown me, and then also want to confirm, um, as I've mentioned in my other videos and many other videos, the things that I know, the things that the Lord has shown me for sure, and I'm basically going to prophesy those things, and I'm confirm what my brother Aaron at Redeemed 44 has been saying um, for who knows how long now. I don't know exactly how long he's been saying it, but um, he is a real prophet. Um, I, in my opinion, what I've heard from him, I know him. I've talked to him at times, and he's my brother, and we're both named Aaron, which is kind of crazy. Um, I do operate in a prophet, you know, I do prophesy at times, I have at different times, and it's completely come true. I, I stay away from prophesying certain things about the end times, and I have, because I don't want people immediately turned off. Uh, because I, my ministry, um, one of my ministries on YouTube is to basically um, warn ahead of time, basically show, tell people what's coming, and so when it happens... Uh, the Lord's made it very clear. When it happens, and they'll go, oh, he said that, and he said that, and he said that, and he said that. And it's really not that much to rescue people. I mean, I th I've had a lot of emails. I've had people that have changed their minds and their hearts um, because of my videos, and maybe others as well, but they've said they, they thanked me, and um, I'm just very thankful for any of that influence I can have. But my main purpose is to share what's coming, and most... Like I've said before, most will not believe. Most of you that watch this, by far, will not believe anything I say or most of what I say, probably. And I'm okay with that. What I am doing is I am giving you a message from Jesus himself. And you don't have to believe that either. You can think, hey, you're crazy. Like I have many people call me all kinds of names and call me crazy and everything. I don't care. And I've, I've supported a lot of people as well. Um, so i i really want to get this information to you because jesus is putting it upon my heart to share because when this stuff comes when all these things come you'll know that he shared it through me and he shared it to you through me um and it's all about him it's not about me or anything like that it's all about him i'm just the messenger that's it and he would speak to you directly but a lot of people don't most people don't listen to him most people don't know him most people aren't born again and uh, are able to listen to him and then a lot of christians don't listen to him at all because they do their own thing in their own way so um that's going to change just so you know that's going to change which what's coming very very soon that's all going to change and you can start listening and needing him more than you ever have imagined so right here this slide here you know i've said 
as in previous videos, you can check out my previous videos, any of them. My main message has been there's going to be two massive mega tsunamis that are going to hit one on the west coast and one on the east coast. And if you want to know more details about that, check out my videos like um, I Pet Goat 2 Solved Part 1, 2, 3, and 4, or any of the other ones like that. Uh, many other videos I've shared with a lot of things that are in iPad Go that showing that. Now, of course, I've been speculating about the time frame. Anytime I speculated, I haven't been correct. Um, but it's okay. I've never thought I would be definitely correct about everything. But I know we're getting closer and closer and closer. So, And I'm going to have a couple speculations about uh, a couple things in iPad Go on this video. But I'm not going to break down iPad Go videos anymore. I'm pretty much done with it. And this may be my very last time I even talk about it. I don't know. I'm not going to cut myself off completely. But I may mention it here or there. It's just going to be a side thing here and there. Just because I'm I'm really tired of it. I'm tired of that whole video. And, um, and I am not getting any more revelation really. Except for a little bit I'm going to share here on this video. So... So New York, as you see here, New York's going to be underwater. It's just going to be underwater. Um, a lot of the West Coast is going to be destroyed, including, I believe, Hawaii, which is where it's going to come from. Like I mentioned in my videos, I've shown lots of evidence, physical evidence. I've shown a lot of, um, you know, documents and stuff that, you know, these, uh, the Kilauea was basically caused to, um, with these earthquakes and these eruptions and all these, those fissures and everything that were happening. Um, it started waking up again. It, we'd had a 5.5 here a week and a half ago, whatever it was. Um, so it's going to start waking more and more um, and maybe even surprise kind of blow. Um, so I don't know exactly how that's going to be started. I speculated about that, but just letting you know um, that's going to start it on the West Coast and have a mass tsunami that goes across the West Coast. In, I mean, goes across the Pacific Ocean and it's going to hit the West Coast. And then on New York side... Um, it's going to hit basically and destroy New York, like you've seen a lot of movies and everything. So that's what I've said for a long time um, in my videos and things. Then I want to basically touch on the things. I really hit the video. This video will hit the things that I've mentioned, but I want to specifically s stick my, um, <laughs> I guess my reputation out there, whatever, whatever reputation I have. But just say that these are going to happen. I'm not saying when or anything. Um, I'm confirming uh, what my brother has said. So uh, my brother redeemed 44, as you see here. He had a video um, called uh, End Time, End Timeline, I think it was, something like that, Rapture, What I Know, something like that. Um, and there's a little shot of it, whatever, with a little bit of information there. But you can look it up. I'll have a link in the description box to this specific video. So he says the things that he knows, the things that he, the Lord has shown him, and he basically prophesies saying these things are going to happen. I um, mean, these things, these people are this or that. And I'm going to touch on that. And I'm uh, when I watched this, this gave me the format for this video because the Lord really made it clear that he wanted me to confirm what my brother Aaron was saying and to prophesy as well, even though I'm not um, a prophet per se, but I have stepped into the ministry of a prophet at times. The Lord has had me do that for different reasons as I've stepped into teaching and evangelism and um, I've done all five gift ministries of the church and that's just what I do. That's the, what the Lord has me do. He wants me to be all five uh, for different reasons. So I'm all things to all men as much as he wants me to be. And even though I may be dragged kicking and screaming by him, <laughs> like I don't really want to do this video, honestly, um, because it's taken a lot of time and effort when I have even less time. I have a job now that... I'm uh, driving quite a bit, and I'm basically working over 50 hours a week. And then I have twins coming, and family, and my other two kids, and my wife, and I mean all this stuff. And I'm doing a lot more for my wife because she can do less because she's really big, and she needs um, so all this stuff. It's just very crazy life, uh, but I'm sure it's almost over um, as far as our lives here. Uh, we're moving on to heaven very soon. So I just want to let you know, and I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to show you, like I've done before, um, then, you know, my brother shows a picture and then he talks about things, but I'm going to basically show you some other, some pictures on these different subjects I'm going to mention. Things I've already talked about. I've gotten more in depth on some of the stuff. Some of the stuff, not too much in depth, I have I have not covered um, for reasons. If you're wondering, why don't I cover something in more depth or why don't I give more information? It's just because I don't have the time. That's the main reason. And then a second reason may be, as far as, you know, biblical truths and, you know, some of that stuff that's coming, 
I don't want to get into debates with anybody. I really don't have no interest in that. In fact, the Lord, the real reason why, the biggest reason why he wanted me to share iPad Goat stuff is to show information about what's coming, but it not be a bunch of scriptures and a bunch of stuff because people end up debating more and more Christians on my comments and they go back and forth and they're fighting and it's just, I don't want that. I want, I, he wanted me to share something that there wouldn't be a lot of debate. Uh, people would mo mostly listen and maybe not agree and just call me crazy and whatever. I don't care, but um, it would be a little bit more of an impact for some reason. So that's just what his mindset was. And he let me know, let me in on that um, at some point. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to get into more, some of the stuff. So I want to cover what my brother covered in this video um, and a few more things, but um, like, you know, Barack Obama is the Antichrist. I mean, he definitely is. I have over 200, in fact, almost 300 reasons now why he's the Antichrist. Not to mention, like I said, I'm going to say it one more time. His name in Hebrew, Barack Obama, means lightning falling from heaven, which Jesus said in Luke. So um, it's very important that people understand that he is the Antichrist. For the ones who don't know this and or who still question it, um, God has made it very clear, Jesus has made it very clear to me that he is the Antichrist for so many reasons. I'm going to touch on a few reasons here. Um, and so as my brothers mentioned in this video, many people have mentioned it. And I've seen a couple hundred videos easily about people who've received, Christian and non-Christian, who've received dreams about that Barack Obama was the Antichrist. And a lot of them weren't Christian. And some were Christian, but didn't know anything like that, and were surprised to know that when they got the dream. My daughter's got a dream about it when she was five, and she didn't know anything about who Barack Obama is. I never shared who Barack Obama was. She saw him and later on when she was seven or eight. She saw him on TV, and she said, that's him, Daddy. And I'm like, what? And she saw him directing people underground to do natural disasters on people in all over the country and stuff. And... Uh, it's a long story. I won't get into all that. But it, listen, there's so much stuff. There's so many, probably thousands and thousands of dreams that people have seen Barack Obama as the Antichrist. Um, not to mention many other things. I got t so many facts. I've shared a lot of things over my videos over time. I'm going to share something else here. So we know this presidential portrait um, that was done. Uh, very different than the, all the pra past presidential portraits, of course. Um, now this is very unique, of course, because there's things in... There's patterns, there's things in these leaves and flowers that are hidden. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know what those pictures are called, but there's a lot of hidden stuff. Um, but there is, there's a lot. And I'm going to show you a few things that are in here. As you can see right here, there's a pattern right here. This is the same, this is virtually the same, that's virtually the same. This is the same, the way this curves right here. This is the same up here, up here. If you can see my little thing, pointer here, I don't know if you can see very much. But there's three pattern things right here. And I'm going to get into what that is. Um, and a few people have uncovered some of this stuff. I'm not going to get into all those details. Um, and, you know, if people that have shared different things, they have different views than you or me, um, it doesn't matter to me. I take the good and I take the pure out of the stuff that they have and I discard the rest. And that's what you should do. And you should never take anybody's 100% opinion about anything and you should research and study yourself and look into things yourself. Um, but, for example, um, there's people like Jonathan Kleck and other people who've uh, just throw a name out there that I found some stuff in this kind of th this kind of stuff, and many other people. I'm not going to mention everybody. Um, I'll mention names here and there, but just because I mention someone doesn't mean I agree with them 100 percent or even close to. Maybe I agree with them like 10 percent. Um, with John the Clark, most of it's I don't agree with. Some things I do, some things I don't. I think he definitely has talent for sure to see some of these stuff. Um, and there's other people that have shown stuff well, and I and I'm going to show what I believe is what the Lord's showing me about this. So. Um, when you look here, uh, right off the bat, I mean, literally, when I closed my eyes a little bit and squinted, close your eyes and squint and look at the bottom where his his left foot, so his foot on your right, it looks like a little snake winding down right down there. It's a black snake. And it just so happens to kind of look like that with the way the you know leaves are. Yeah, right. It just so happens to look like a snake's head down there slithering. Um, and if you squint your eyes again, you can kind of see it kind of looks like a snake slithering. Uh, around this you know these leaves here and that's not that's on purpose you know this artist does stuff very controversial very and i'm gonna show you some of that stuff here but i'm gonna show you this image also upside down this image right here is zoomed in a bit now look upside down now squint your eyes okay a little bit and you can see right here this is a three this is a three right here this is a three 
Okay, squint your eyes. You can see this is a three. The bottom is kind of, of the three is kind of in the leg here, but it's a three. Squint your eyes right here, and you can see a two. There's a two right here. There's a two. Now again, th this was, you know, normal. This was no right side up, and a lot of times the enemy does things upside down and backwards or sometimes just backwards or sometimes just upside down but the stuff he really wants to hide a lot of times he does upside down and backwards so we're upside down right here and this is where you see the three and the two right here and then it's backwards so really it's two three okay two three it's two three so what's significant about two three well i've shared that many times there there's a lot of significance to two three but um, I'll start off with 2, 3, 23 is how many chromosomes that each parent gives to the child that is born. So 23 from the mother, 23 from the father, and then uh, basically what the mark of the beast is going to be, a lot of people don't know this, some do, is another 23 chromosomes that are basically technological. They're basically a combination of different things to make the mark of the beast, which is going to change your DNA completely with another set of 23 chromosomes, which 23 and 23 and 23 are 69, which represents the portal or the uh, basically infinity in a sense, or going you know through time. It's a long story about all that stuff. I've shared some of that stuff. Um, also, um, 23 is also two divided by three, which is two divided by three is 0.6666666, okay? And then that pattern I was showing you up there was basically, if you kind of color in these, where the pattern is, I mean, it's a kind of, there's some clear, uh, you know, uh, basically reproductions here or the pattern, and then there's some that aren't as clear up here and everything, but it basically shows 666. And then it has to do with that 23 that you see in these legs. Okay, there's several things in this portrait. I mean, I can't even find them all, I'm sure. Okay, I've seen some, and I'm not sharing all of them either. I'm just going to share a few because I don't have a lot. Of, I'm not going to have a super, super, super long video. But um, anyway, that's here. There's a 666 clearly in this. The pattern's there. Believe it or not, I don't really care. Um, and then right here, this is something Jonathan Kleck found, um, for example, um, is that there is a basically a cobra head or a, a serpent head built into these leaves into his head and then the, the shadows the light and the dark make the fangs of the serpent head okay now listen if you are if you're a christian and you still don't think barack obama is the antichrist what is holding you back my goodness what is holding you back there is so much stuff i mean like i said what are the chances that barack obama is in hebrew is lightning falling from heaven exactly what are the chances of that and why would Jesus say, I see Satan as lightning falling from heaven, Barack Obama? I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, wake up. I mean, seriously, wake up. Not to mention all the things I've shared, that he's the Mahdi, which is the uh, basically the Muslim Antichrist, um, and he fits every part of those. I mean, I have, a whole, I have lists and lists, and I've shared things. And I'm not going to do a video on all the things. Um, I just, I don't want to. I don't want to do all the work for you. I mean... And some of this stuff, you can search out some of this stuff more. I'm going to show you things that the Lord showed me to share. And, you know, he wants you to look into these things. He just wants me to give you enough to think and to consider, mainly for the future. But hopefully you'll take some of these things and run with them and look into them and study them and find more things. And then prove it to yourself. Because I'm not going to prove it to you. Uh, there's no way I'm going to. Um, so anyway, that's all here. This is showing this right here. Another thing I want to show you, um, some people know about this. There's the hidden finger. So, uh, you know, a hand does not end like this right here. It closes right in here. This is obviously showing that there's, it looks like, it's made to look like there's a hidden finger. And again, you know, we're talking about Nephilim DNA is what we're talking about. The Antichrist um, is going to have that, um, you know, the mark of the beast and everything is going to basically bring people into a new form. Um, and I believe what I've shown and what's out there is that Obama is a clone, including Nephilim DNA that's in him. He is a clone uh, for many reasons I've shared. Uh, uh, There's one particular guy named um, uh, Mason. Uh, what's his name again? I'm trying to think. No, Free, uh, Freeman. Sorry, Freeman. Uh, Freeman Fly, I think is his name. But you can look it up. But you can look it up. Akhenaten, clone, Obama, something like that. But he's brought a lot of evidence that Obama is a clone. And his... and um, you know, people around him are uh, basically his daughters and um, his so-called wife. 
um, are clones. Um, and they're basically, they look a lot like King Akhenaten and his family. It's really crazy. Um, I know it seems impossible, but it's true. And he has to be that to be this perfect man that they want to replicate Jesus in a way. So there's a lot going on with that. Um, there's a six finger to represent the six fingered Nephilim. Um, and that's showing that right there. I mean, it's, <laughs> that's not how our hand looks. I mean, I'm an artist. That's not how our hand looks. Um, it's definitely kind of hinting on some, and a lot of these things in art, in movies, music, videos, I mean, all this stuff in that portrait that we're looking at right here, this is an enemy and demons hide information like iPad go and all kinds of stuff. They hide spiritual information in the artwork, in the imagery, in all this stuff. It's a lot of representations, a lot of hidden imagery to communicate subliminally, uh, predictive programming. I mean, all kinds of stuff. It's just designed that way. Okay. And if you can see it, great. If you can't, I'm sorry, but uh, you need to open your eyes and you need to come to Jesus and he'll show you this stuff like you would not believe. Um, you know, there's this sperm that's hanging out on his head right here. I mean, that's super clear. People go, oh, hey, that's a, you know, that's a vein. No, I'm sorry, but that's a pretty big bump right here. And when you take into the whole account, um, and this is kind of highlighting it a little bit better, uh, taking the whole account, everything that's around this, um, for example, um, well, let me, let me get into that here and say, I'll just go from here next. So basically in iPad goat, we have a people, some people think it's a sweat bead coming down when Obama's looking down at the apple that opens everything. It's not, it's grayed. It's not clear. It's, you know, if you, you know, I'm an artist as well. Like I said, I'm an artist and I would not make that grade and everything. This is, this is basically, this is the penis or the phallic symbol on the chalkboard. Okay. And I'll show you in a second. And that is actually, it's shooting up the three sperm that are shooting up. And actually there's a fourth one, but it's coming down his face. It's sperm. This is a, this is like, this is a glob of sperm, whatever, you know, going down. It's very sick. These people are sick people. And it might even represent the 22nd, um, maybe of April that's coming up. But anyway, uh, V is the 22nd uh, letter of the alphabet. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, so this is really crazy because there's a lot of parallels here with this. There's a sperm on his head right here. There's a, this sperm, you know, in a lot of sperm coming down right here. Just very sick. Um, he's not sweating because he's the Antichrist because... Uh, he knows what's coming. I mean, he's prepped to be this person and everything. I mean, he's the beast that comes out of the sea. Uh, you know, he's from, um, Hawaii, you know, he was so-called born in Hawaii, which he wasn't really wasn't, but that's the narrative that they want you to believe. Um, and then here it is, here's this, uh, phallic symbol on the chalkboard. So at this, at this perspective, he's under the semen that's coming down, but it's right here and it's on top of his head. And then also another clue of that is you've got one, two, three splotches of semen. And then the fourth one makes the eye of the shark. And the Antichrist is the symbol of the shark. He, the shark is the, you know, is the predator in the water. Um, he is the predator. His tassel, like I've shared, is touching several times, many times, the different truths. Like it'll hit the dead man and it'll hit the shark a lot. And he is the shark that kills pe uh, people and everything. He will be... Um, that kills the Christians, the, you know, the dead goats and everything. The, I'm sorry, the dead sheep um, and all this stuff. So there's just so much parallels. To, to the, I mean, look at this. Here's, here's some artwork done by demons through people. Here's some artwork done by demons through people saying the same thing. Sperm on the head, you know, different symbolisms of that. I won't get into all that, okay? And then we have, of course, Kehinde Wiley. He's the artist that do, did this. And so you go, oh, sperm, yeah, right. Well, here it is, sperm. There's sperm all over in this this uh, picture or this uh, painting that he did. Here's another one with this sperm and a different one. He has several of them with his sperm hanging out. And again, I, you know, I think that is about, um, you know, th the new age that's coming and the new type of reproduction that's going to happen um, with the mark and everything. It's, it's symbolism, okay? And I'm going to show some more things that uh, Kahinde Wiley is basically t uh, promoting as well, like this, beheadings, okay? So here's Kahinde Wiley, basically, who did Obama's portrait. I mean, this guy's a sick dude, okay? Without a doubt. If you look into his life at all, he's a sick dude, um, has sick art. Um, and these are, you know, these are black women that look pretty ticked off, and they happen to be cutting off the heads with knives, cutting off the heads of white women, I mean, if that's not sick, and that's not, I mean, where do you hear about head chopping, head chopping off 
um, in the Bible. That's in, you know, what the Antichrist is going to be cutting people's heads off, uh, especially Christians. And, um, you know, you get the idea in the United States of white Christians, whatever. Um, a lot of Christians are white. You know, most Christians are, you know, in, in the United States and things. And so this idea, this maybe this, um, you know, fantasy of some bitter black people, maybe, of cutting off heads of white people, man, especially Christians, you know, um, or anybody. I mean, the idea, some of these sick ideas, they hit every kind of group. I mean, there's no superior group. We're all the same, um, and we're and to pit groups against each other is just insane. It's not godly. It's not loving. Um, and that's what Obama's done since he was president the whole time. I mean, he, all he did was divide the country even more. And because he's the Antichrist, I mean, he's there to make it more racially charged um, than anybody. And people are like, oh, hey, once we voted for, you know, black president, then, you know, racism over. Well, no, the, the liberals and leftists made it more uh, fomented. They fomented even more. And they just kept saying it more and more and more. I just saw an interview with Morgan Friedman with Don Lemon on CNN. And Morgan Friedman basically says, uh, Lemon says, you know, isn't racism holding people back? He's like, no. And he, it was so funny. Morgan, I was so ha proud of Morgan Freeman. You know, I don't agree with him on a lot of things, uh, as I don't a lot of people, of course. But he said, no, you know, he said, wake up. I mean, we, you know, people, we all have the same opportunities. You know, yes, some people go through hard things. He grew up in, I think it was Alabama or something, um, with hard, you know, a hard life and everything. But he became, he goes, the fact that we're both here right now is evidence um, that, you know, racism is not a problem. You know, it was so awesome to hear that kind of stuff because it's true. It's true. And we all have different things that are in our way of success and being who we could be and all that stuff. Everybody, um, everybody has the same opportunities. Um, some people have a little bit harder time. If you think about it, someone who has no arms and no legs, do you think they have an easier time than someone who's black? No, I'm sorry. I don't think so. Um, that's a very crazy thing. So, um, so anyway, this is this is Kenny Wiley, and this is his stuff, and this is the guy who did the presidential portrait. So he's very spiritually charged, evil, and this is a very antichrist under belief um, of cutting people's heads off. That's in the Bible. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna say to agree with my brother Aaron, uh, Mister Redeemed Forty Four, who I really appreciate, and he's an awesome dude. He really is. Um, is uh, Pope Francis is the false prophet? Okay, when they met. Um, you know, uh, specifically when they met on 923, technically, I mean, they probably met a little bit, a couple, a little bit before that, but they had a historical meeting on 923, 2015. Um, the Lord basically made very clear to me that that was the end of America. They sealed a covenant to end America. That was the end of America. And then it was from there, it was going to progress into the full destruction of America that would take a few years. I didn't know how long it would take at that time. Um, but he is the false prophet. He, there's more things said about him more things that he said that's so evil about Jesus, about Jesus' followers, about, I mean, it, pull up his quotes. I mean, they're so ridiculously evil. And I'm going to show you some serious evidence right here that he is evil to the core. And the Catholic Church, as as leadership, I'm not saying Catholics in general. I think there's a lot of good Catholics and a Christian. And I think a lot of Catholics aren't Christian probably, but I think a lot of them, a certain amount are and they try to follow Christ and stuff. I'm just saying the doctrine of the church and all their imagery and all this stuff is very evil. And let me show you that. And I've showed some of this already. I mean, a lot of my videos, um, a couple of things I'm duplicating, but I want to kind of give a you know general idea to bring a little bit of evidence with the things I'm saying. Um, but it's not my goal to convince you, but I want to show you some of this stuff. So here he is. And, and you know, he just so happens, you know, he's just, uh, that's a weird picture of his face. Uh, it's really bizarre to me. It looks really bizarre. Um, but then you see these little, the M comes through, there's little horns right here. Again, they hide this stuff in here. Um, he, he's also, you know, the New World Pope at one point in Time Magazine as well. It said, you know, New World Order, New World Pope. I mean, he's the head of New World Order in a way. The Catholic Church is really at the top of the pyramid, in case you didn't know. Anybody knows about the Illuminati, the Freemasons, and all those different levels and everything? I mean, the, the Catholic Church is the top of the pyramid. I mean, with the with the top families as well, they're right on the top of the pyramid, and they're one of the three main heads of uh, this world. And I'm going to talk about that a little later. But um, and look at this, just happened to be under the I am, um, and he's the Pope, right? Uh, he's the Pope. He's in place of Jesus. He's the Vicar of Christ. He's in place of Jesus Christ. Give me a break. 
I mean, no, sorry. He said basically to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ is dangerous. He said that he would basically, when aliens come, he said he would baptize them. He, he said some really crazy quotes. And so he's the first dark pope. He's the first Jesuit pope ever. Um, and he will be the last, I believe. Now, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I think the Lord is showing me very clearly. So I'm saying right now that I'm prophesying uh, the Pope Francis is the, the anti uh, the, is the false prophet. Obama is the Antichrist. Pope Francis is the false prophet that the Bible speaks about. And here we go. Here's the horns again sticking out. Just so happens to be he's in darkness, and then he's got the horns sticking out of the top. I mean, are you kidding me? You know, sometimes these things are a little bit obvious, but they're you know, they're still kind of hidden. People will go, ah, they wouldn't think, oh, there would be horns there, but there are. It's crazy. I mean, red horns, <laughs> red time. These other oh, they've got white. And this is Red Horns. He's in darkness. I mean, you know, he's the dark pope. He really is. Um, I got more information that's crazy here. Um, here he is. Um, his original name. I can't even think of his original name, but his real name. He's Ar Argentinian or whatever. Um, here he is right there with the hidden hand. And this is a picture taken on purpose. To, you know, as he's putting his hand in his coat, this is a figure showing the hidden hand, um, the sign of the master of the second veil. Um, and all these different people who have their hidden hand when these pictures are taken on purpose. Stalin, Kim Jong-un, Karl Marx, they're all part of the same club in some form or fashion. But ultimately, these different groups that they're in are all part of the same, um, you know, basically system, but in different ways, different hierarchies. But they're all in hierarchies that go to the top of a pyramid, ultimately to the top of the pyramid. Um, and they do things behind the scenes, just like when Kennedy had a big speech about people that, you know, John F. Kennedy, which is one of my heroes, um, he, you know, he had a speech about how we, these, uh, groups that do things in secret and stuff. And not long after that, he was shot and killed. Um, <laughs> because we don't like secret societies and secret agendas and all this kind of stuff. Um, and what I, th what I like about Kennedy was that he was very liberal in a lot of ways, and he came from these rich elite families and he had, they put him in there for, to keep this whole thing going. And then he woke up at some point in the middle of his presidency and fought this, his system and tried to, um, you know, bring money back to the United States and have it on the gold standard again and all that. And when that stuff started happening, then he was shot. And when he started speaking out against these societies, the secret societies and stuff, and really making a big deal and standing up against these people, he was taken out. You know, and that's why I consider him one of my heroes. Um, so anyway, uh, that's crazy. And here, here's the Catholic um, audience hall by the Vatican. If you know about this, this is this crazy grotesque statue that's like three stories high or more. I forget exactly how, maybe three stories high. Um, and it's supposed to be, supposedly, you know, Jesus coming out of the apocalypse. But it's very horrific. It, it looks very sick and gross. It looks like something out of a horror movie. Like if it was actually moving, it would be right out of a horror movie. It's very disgusting. And this thing is sitting right in front of where the Pope sits in this Catholic audience hall. And I'm going to show you more here. And here's the cardinals and different things and the bishops and stuff. And they're sitting here too. And, you know, where is he sitting? Where is he actually sitting? Where is this? This is, and I'll show you that in a second, but here's the close-up of this so-called Jesus figure right here coming out. Now, these are skeleton hands, kind of these dark hands grabbing him, and there's skulls in, there's skulls in here and stuff, and it's just, it's sick. This whole thing is very sick. But this is a serpent head. This is, like, supposed to be his hair and stuff, all distorted. But this is an eye. This is a mouth. This is a serpent head. This is showing... Um, a polyon or a baden in the Hebrew coming out of the pit, coming up out of the pit. And by the way, that like I've mentioned before, Jesuits are behind CERN. If you don't know about CERN, I'm not going to get into it, but it's basically they're going to open a pit, like the Bible says in Revelation 9, and all these evil things are going to come out, these locust-looking look, locust -looking creature things, and then they're going to be led by this creature that's going to be serpent-like called a baden in Hebrew or a polyon in Greek. Okay, Apollo, basically, like the Apollo moonland, <laughs> like the Apollo missions and stuff. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, so here is um, just showing you, like, a, so supposedly Jesus' face, but it's really talking about this apocalyptic event bringing uh, Apollyon out of the ground in, from a dimension, basically from the abyss, and all his minions, these locusts that are with him that can't quite make out 100%, but these are locust beings here, and they're coming out of the ground. 
and that's what it is. If this is if this is Jesus coming out of the apocalypse, it's very sick, minted anyway, minimum. Okay, uh, but there it is. I mean, it's crazy. So where is this located? Where is this in the audience hall? And the, there it is. It's right in the middle here. Of what? This is where he's sitting. This is where they are. This is where he sits right there. This is where that statue is. Look at that. Do you see that big serpent there? If you haven't seen this before. These eyes are, these stained glass windows are serpent eyes. Obviously. This is a serpent head. Scales and everything. Big, huge serpent fangs. Tongue right here. I mean, are you kidding me? If you don't see this, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's very, very clear. Very. I mean, I don't know how you walk into this thing right here it's kind of near the entrance right here how you look at this and you don't see this and you don't go what the heck i mean are you kidding me he's speaking from the mouth of the serpent and if you don't see that right now i don't know what to say i mean seriously and then where he is standing let me show you where he would be standing there he is standing he still sees a serpent and guess what this serpent see eye on both sides there's the head there's the scales and everything he, it looks like he's eating the people. And look at that. So you, from each side, you can see the serpent eyes and the serpent head and everything. And from this direction, the people are going into his mouth. This stuff is sick, man. I mean, this is, this is who these people really are. He's wearing white. He should be wearing all black and have like serpent eyes and a tongue coming out. I mean, he, he, these people are evil. These people are evil. They're pedophiles. They're... Um, they, they're, they're influencing all the ma major leaders and, uh, you know, business leaders. There's a picture I have with all the top business leaders with the Pope and they're basically kissing his hand. Are you kidding me? Wake up people. Seriously. Wake up. If you don't know this stuff already, seriously, wake up. And then here's the outside of the Catholic audience hall, that same place, which on either this side or on this side, you can see the same eyes, just the, you know, you see the fangs and he's speaking from the mouth of the serpent or on the other side, the serpent's eating the people. And then this here, look at this on the outside from above, there's the same glass window on this side, there's one on that side. Look at that. It's a serpent head. And that just happens to be, it's, you know, it's just perfectly sloped. It, it's got eyes on both sides. This is if you were to cut off the serpent's head right here from the body. And there's the mouth and everything. You can kind of see it. But there's a serpent head. That is a serpent head. That is a snake head. And that's just a coincidence? No, I'm sorry. That was designed. This was designed. Again, wake up. I'm showing you evidence that is super compelling. And again, to back up what I'm saying, the Pope, the current Pope, is the false prophet. Okay, just so you know. And that's what I'm saying. And when these two nuggets, and it's a nice way of saying evil people and all kinds of things, names I could call them. When these two nuggets got together, they were sealing a pact with Satan together about the end of the United States. Okay, just so you know. And you'll find out very soon. Whether you can disagree with me all you want, it doesn't matter. Um, but these two are totally corrupt and evil. And they are possessed by spirits. And that you, and eventually this guy will be completely possessed by the by the, by Satan. It will be, be Satan incarnate, basically, okay? Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is another thing that uh, my brother mentioned. It was Planet X. Now, this is Planet X, Nibiru, the Destroyer. Uh, I mean, he's called this thing's called all kinds of names. And I'm going to just deal with... Um, this is kind of... It's kind of a combination. Uh, it's, a, it's a sun. It's a brown dwarf star. And it looks like a comet because it has two tails. Um, and that's iron oxide. Because this thing has smashed into you know, into uh, the world a few times, um, definitely a couple, if not twice, uh, more than that. But anyway, and it's God has used it to recreate the earth at least once. Okay, and the the Bible actually says that in the beginning of Genesis, it says the the word was with uh, the world was uh, it became, it was without void, form and void. And the word was is a better word translated in Hebrew is became. It became without form and void. So um, it was fully created, and there was stuff he had on here, which we know. And then it was made. It was eventually made, hit, and made without form and void. It became without form and void. Um, and it's by this thing, okay. And I've studied this so much, and I'm not going to show you anywhere. I mean, no, no real evidence, because I just don't want to get into it. I don't have the time. I'd really have to put together all kinds of stuff and show you all these slides. I mean, we're talking about articles from the 80s and 90s about that they actually found planet x 
uh, like Dr. Harrington of the Naval Observatory that was killed recently, uh, just after he had all this information that he basically proved that a planet X exists. Am I getting into all that? So many things, so many scientists at that time saying that we found Planet X, it's the one that's perturbing or moving um, like Pluto around and Uranus and stuff like that. And anyway, so here it is, it's one of the shots. And this, by the way, this comes from actually, this comes from a uh, video, um, a infrared video, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to show you all the videos because you're going to have to find them yourself. Um, but a lot of these shots come from video because I'm not into just pictures because the pictures don't, Sometimes pictures can be altered or whatever. When I see good video and I look at it and I kind of analyze it, I take some shots from there. This, this is actually um, not from video. This is from this is in, on Google Earth, and there's certain coordinates that show where this is at. But it shows the two tails, and it's amongst a particular um, a constellation. And I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, but right here, I will say that in Google Sky, you can find there is the whole planetary. Um, it's basically a solar system that, uh, planet X basically is the head of, because it's a brown dwarf, it's a burnt out brown dwarf star and it comes to get recharged when it comes around the sun and it has other planets with it, which are the, which is the dragon with its seven heads and 10 crowns. Um, and it was right here at one point, um, this time of year, the, the right time of year. And this is Virgo. And for some reason on Google Sky, if you didn't know about this, but on Google Sky, in all of Google Sky, you can look it up yourself. Go to Google Sky, hit on infrared tab here, go to Virgo, hit the infrared thing, and you'll see there's a black um, rectangle covering up this on purpose. So you can't completely make it out. Why is there a black rectangle sitting at the feet or at the legs of Virgo, just like the Revelation 12 says, um, right there, ready to devour the child once it's born, coming out of the birth canal. I mean, it's crazy, okay? There's just so much evidence out there. Another picture, this is another video um, showing these massive tails coming off this orb that's flying through the... Now, you know, people can say, oh, hey, those are that's, those are planes, which I'm sorry, that's not a plane. But um, if it was a plane, then why do a lot of these videos, which I have not showing because... I. I just don't feel like I should. I think you should look it up and, and find it if you really want to know about it. But I'm just going to tell you. Like I said, I'm just telling you ahead of time what's going on. Um, and then you will eventually see it really close. <laughs> it's going to be about 50 times the size of the moon. And basically, we're going to go into its tail or two tails, um, the earth. And that's all prophesied in the Bible. Um, and it's going to slow down the earth to a complete stop like it did in the past with Joshua's long day. Um and all that. So basically, uh, these two tails, um, or this whole, when it, however it's been seen, this thing is a lot of times going up and down, but sometimes going sideways and whatever. But the biggest telltale sign that it's not a plane or anything is that on video and stuff, it's going either, um, it's going up, it's going up instead of down, and it's going backwards instead of forwards. So literally, it's flying outside our atmosphere in space but it's so bright enough at, in some way that we can see it or it's being hit by the sun or something um where it is actually flying backwards or um or going up instead of down okay so that's not a plane um i mean a plane from a certain perspective can go up but not if it's close to you it'd be going away from you um or going towards you and the way anyway this perspective is that this is actually showing is not you know, not anything else that we could, I mean, it could be some other object that we've never seen, um, but a lot, there's a lot of consistency with this image. Um, and it just so happens to be in a lot of different cultures, especially the Egyptians, they have this flying disc with two tails and they, they look at this as a God. Uh, this is the God, um, I believe it's a, of the underworld. Um, and cause that's when, when this thing comes around every roughly about 360 to 400 years and causes havoc. A lot of the things that have happened in the Bible, a lot of the crazy things that have happened in the Bible because of this and God's used this for signs and all kinds of stuff. But these, the two tails, um, on this orb or disc that flies through the air has been completely tracked by astronomers, um, in many, many cultures. And there's so much evidence of that. It's crazy. Um, a guy named Gil Broussard and, uh, if you look up planet seven X, um, has done an amazing amount of detail uh, evidence. I don't know, like I said, I don't agree with everything he says and everything and all that, but he's got, done a lot of great uh, information about this and many other people. I mean, I could list probably about 16 people that have done some massive research that I've 
gleaned from and studied and learned and uh, in my own independent stuff I've done I've done I've oh so many hours on this stuff that it's there's just no way it's not coming it's the way it's n not in the in uh, in the uh, outer it's actually in our solar system now and we'll be seeing it very very soon now I don't know exactly when but I'm speculating about that time frame okay and here's another example of the flying disc that's as a god and these are the keys to the underworld right here um anyway i mean that's all over and it's in some other cultures ancient cultures as well as well as the sumerians um the anunnaki um and different ancient cultures basically show planet x flying through the air it's really crazy um and a lot of other um there's ancient pictures and paintings of uh, this orb in the air and the sky etchings i mean all kinds of stuff um here's another example of it over tasmania okay and i'm sorry that is not a plane i mean look at this if anything it looks like a meteor okay it looks like a meteor but it's not because guess what this was actually going up <laughs> this was going up so uh, the angle that it was flying and the position position it was our rotation of our earth was going faster than it so it was flying backwards it was flying up like that it was going in this position this direction or look like this direction but it was going up and i'm sorry but that's not a plane or anything i mean you there's no form of a plane that you could get out of this i mean it, it's not it's the two tails and and i've looked at lots of chemtrails and contrails and everything and this does not look like them at all in any shape manner or form and the way it gets really fat right here and then streams out to a single lines right here it's very tail tail tell of these um and here's another one right here it's kind of a look around um orb looking thing and then it's coming off from a different angle it's right in the, where you can see it from the middle um it's very crazy and again this is video as well um so believe it or not it doesn't matter to me but i'm just sharing with you that these are out there here's an example of a lady now her i can't get her her name and her channel escape me right now for some reason i probably should have said that but like i said i wasn't going to hit everybody uh but she basically in 2016 november 11 2016 is when she first saw it um and she had a better video and pictures of it but she puts this all together and just basically basically almost every month increment she had a little bit of a window that she could see this thing and it's very difficult to see i mean there's a government nasa and everything and the government uses all these different things to and these massive lenses to obscure this and the other planets it's very crazy um it's actually real technology and there's patents for it and everything uh, that you can look up um basically the this object she had this on a 260 time zoom a kind of a regular camera with but with a crazy 260 time zoom and she zoomed it all the way out each time and each month it got closer and closer and closer and closer okay and guess what right now it's super close it's super close um and i'm not getting into all that right now so because i don't know exactly when it's we're going to finally see it and when all these things that obscure the view are going to be completely either destroyed or t or not be effective anymore but they're doing this so they can get everybody uh, all the important people into underground into the dumbs and the d deep underground on military bases and everything at some point and then this thing's going to start wreaking havoc but um it's going to be a actual sign and i believe it's the la it's the sign in revelation 12 that the first sign is basically the woman um, with the 12 stars above her head and all that stuff um, you know, the, the birth of Jupiter and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, that we've seen in the stars, which is really what Revelation 12 is talking about. The Revelation 12 sign, as we call it. Uh, but the next sign is the dragon. And that's the dragon and it's coming. And when that comes, that'll actually be, at, after that sign will be the, the rapture of the, of the body of Christ, or the, uh, the bride of Christ. So, um, so that's what I'm saying here. I'm saying planet X is coming. It's going to be the next sign. And I'm prophesying that. It's going to be the next sign before the raptures start. Now, there's going to be three raptures. Okay. Um, again, I'm prophesying that as well. There's going to be three raptures. And as far as any more details about that, as far as there could be little mini raptures or little other things going amongst this, I'm not going to say that I know definitely, definitively, but I know there will be three raptures. And I will basically explain them. So the three raptures will start with um, a rapture of the children or um children up to the age of accountability now i don't know what that is exactly i can speculate 
Um, uh, and some people say it's 12. Some people say it's up to 18. I tend to think it's up to about like the age of 17, 18, but I don't know. Um, now I found, and I'm not going to bring this, put this on here either. You can look this up. Uh, I'll give you an example. My brother, Tim Foster 405, his channel, you can look up his channel. Again, I don't believe, uh, agree with a lot of th everything he says either, but he's got a lot of re really great information about, he has uncovered a lot of scriptures in the New Testament, especially the Old Testament, about um, the rapture of the children first and how um, the uh, how uh, Jesus is coming to, as a lion to rip the children away first um, and things like that. There's so much, so much stuff. And I've done my own independent research and I have many scriptures in the Old Testament and the New Testament that show the children will be raptured. The innocent, and I go, of course that goes up to a certain age of accountability, will be raptured first before all the tribulation happens. And I had struggled with that for a long time, and I begged God to show me, because it killed my heart, that children would be here during the tribulation. I could not bear it, and it hurt me so much. And I just said, you've got to show me for sure. Is this really going to happen? Are you going to take them off or whatever? And he made it so clear. I have so many scriptures, and I'm so confident, not to mention the fact that he first showed me after I was just really dealing with it. And, and I would look at kids when I was going through this stuff, knowing about the tribulation that's coming, and it would just break my heart. And I thought that they might be in the tribulation. I just begged him, and he finally said yes. I don't know why I finally got it, but he finally told me, yes, they will be taken. And then I said, give me the evidence so I can share it with some people and stuff. And I just haven't, I, I, I'm not felt led to list all the stuff. Um, you can look it up yourself. Um, you can go to Tim Foster's web uh, channel, Tim Foster 405, if you want. You can see some of the stuff that he has, which is very, very, very compelling. I found all kinds of scriptures that show that the children will be taken first. So, so if the children are taken first, then what's the next one? Well, well, let me show you this first. So the children, I believe this is kind of shown in this um, uh, magazine, the Economist magazine from 2017. And there's all kinds of future events that's going to happen here. And some things that have already happened, um, but not in 2017. Um, they were going to happen in the future, even though it says world in 2017, which is crazy. These are tarot cards. This is really evil. But I want to share real quick that this is actually the yellow vest protest. Now, these people look yellow, but these are yellow vest protests that was going on. Um, and that is actually, has been this last year. But it was showing the world in 2017. So it's not exactly the world, even though these are the three houses right here. You've got the financial, you've got the spiritual, and you've got the military, military industrial complex that basically affect all media. Art, art and literature and, you know, all media affected by these three main... You're talking about London, D.C., and the Vatican, which are all um, their own countries. Anyway, so I'm not getting all that. Um, and then there's so much with this these tarot cards and what they say. By the way, this card right here, the Judgment card, um, these the all these eight cards are trump cards or they call them arcana cards and there's 12 uh, arcana cards in a deck of 78 i think 78 total um uh of these uh <laughs> i think what you call these again tarot cards hello um so there's like total of 78 tarot cards something like that now i may get something something wrong here because i'm trying to remember all this um but there's there these are eight trump cards or they're called i think arcana cards um, and, and then this is the 20th one in order. And this is, this is tilted. This one's tilted and this one's tilted. So this is actually, this is crazy. This is the 20th and there's the 20, the 20th, um, arcana or Trump card. And that's so funny. There's Trump's on it, which is not a coincidence. And then down here, this one that's tilted, the only other one that's tilted is the 17th Trump or arcana card um, in order, it's the 17th one. So this is the 20th one, this is the 17th one, so 2017. <laughs> it's crazy. So it might, may not even be referring to the uh, the year 2017. Maybe just saying this is in the future, but this is the 20th, this is the 17th. Anyway, so, but I believe these are connected. So this is judgment that's going to happen at this event. Okay, this is what I believe is very possible. I'm, now, I'm not prophesying this. I'm prophesying that the children will be taken, the people up to age of accountability, which there's children and looks like people up to age of accountability right in here. Okay. And they're the stars that are going up as a cratered planet. And maybe stars are falling at the same time. And then here we have a look at, check it out, a uh, planet with tails, Nibiru coming at that, at that time. And that's why I think that's, this might be showing. Now I'm speculating about this, 
but I am telling you that um, the the children or the children up to age accountability will be taken first, and that'll freak a lot of people out. And God's doing that for a number of reasons. One is to wake people up, but also to take the children out of the way because they are innocent up to accountability, age of accountability. Um, where they had a chance to basically decide and make logical and heart decisions to do the wrong thing and everything. And God's taking them out of the way. Okay. Um, anyway, I'm going to move on here. Um, here's another example here. Um, if you watch the movie or read the book, Childhood's End, this is Arthur C. Clarke from, you know, it's been around a while. This is an old cover. Uh, but basically this is, you know, the alien idea, aliens and the idea of aliens coming and stuff. And abducting people and all that's been around for a while um uh, since the 50s 40s 30s i mean i don't know how long it's been it's a long time maybe the 1800s i don't know but um if you basically have you ever seen this movie that was done by sci-fi channel right here um or read the book or anything uh it's basically saying that aliens are going to abduct the children and it'll be the end of childhood um if you watch this show it's a kind of a couple of show mini series or whatever it is crazy and and then these aliens and this alien s happens to look like a d demon or the devil with wings and horns and everything and it's just freaky i mean is, are you kidding me like this is and so the obama which is the antichrist he's going to probably explain why these children disappeared and that they were basically taken out of the way for some reason or something um and they were taken you're gonna say they were taken by aliens okay and so because they're going to have to explain, and then the aliens are coming, probably maybe taken by the bad aliens, possibly, and so the good aliens are coming to uh, basically save us all and everything. Um, and I'm going to get into all that at some point here, but but look at this Baphomet here, and then the Baphomet with the children, and then here's the Baphomet figure looking thing on Childhood Santa with the children. There's so much going on here, it's just crazy. But this idea that children will be taken is, is the whole idea of Childhood's End. Um, and so I think I'm just showing you some examples of how it's in things about the children leaving. There's so much more. I mean, I'm, I'm just really scratching the surface, hardly even scratching the surface of the things that are in things about children leaving. Um, and so the next rapture, so that was the first rapture, the innocent or the children up to age accountability are taken. Then there's two other groups, two other raptures, and which represent two other groups. And these two other groups are the represented by the virgins, the five foolish and the five wise virgins in the Bible. Okay, this is the Lord's made it super clear to me in super in different ways, crazy information I've been given at times that He get downloads to me. Um, and one of those things is the the wise virgins are the ones who have their lamp full because they have faith, they have trust in Him, they know Him. In fact, when the wise go to get the more more oil because they don't really they haven't really trusted Him this whole time like the wise ones have. Um, they come to try to get into the wedding or in, into the door, and he says, I don't know you. I never knew you, right? And so it's about knowing him and being faithful to follow him um, and the, the difference between those Christians. So there are Christians that are um, are faithful and are following him and doing their best. Now, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to do the wrong thing. We're going to whatever, but we do our best to follow him and, and change our lives and grow and heal and uh you know, do just become more and more like Christ as best we can, and we're going to mess up. We're going to do the wrong things. We're going to whatever, but we we're on a we're on a journey with Jesus to know Him and walk with Him. And then there's the group that are not the ones who are children of God. At some point, they did were born again. They did make a decision to make Him Lord and and God and know that God is our Father and everything. But they have just gone their own way, which is most of Americans, honestly. Most of American Christians are like that. And so they're going to be in the tribulation. And so the first rapture is going to be, the, sorry, the second rapture after the children is going to be some amount of days after. It could be three days. It could be a week. I don't know. But I've, I've had dreams about this. It's clear that we'll have a little bit of time. The faithful ones, the, um, the wise virgins, the faithful, the bride of Christ, basically, the actual bride, the, the pure and chaste virgin of Christ, who only made pure by faith. Okay? By faith, not by works. Let's say any man should boast. By faith, by trust, by walking with Jesus. That's what faith is. Abraham d did not doubt. He was moved by faith and it was credited to him as righteousness. That's what the Bible says. He's the father of faith. And so the ones who basically do their own thing, they're not walking in faith. They're walking in their own ways, their own righteousness, their own works. And they'll be left here 
and and then have an, she'll have an opportunity for the third rapture for them to be taken. And that's in in the, in Revelation where it says basically, you know, John's in heaven, he's saying, um, who are these people? And then he said, these are they that have come out of great tribulation and they've washed their robes in the blood of the lamb. And there was too many for him to count. And that is the bigger group. There's a bigger group that are be left here during the tribulation, the first section of tribulation. They're going to go through a lot of tribulation. Um, and a lot of them are going to come to the truth and come to a relationship with Jesus and wake up in the tribulation and finally follow him because I have no choice because people will be hunted down and beheaded and I mean all kinds of stuff and crazy you know natural disasters and planet actually will be wreaking havoc on the earth and the Antichrist will be hunting people and all this stuff and people are going to have to either receive the mark and eat or not or can't eat or drink or even trade or anything like that if they don't receive the mark and so they're going to be kind of outcast if the, or they will receive the mark and be behe- or and uh, be damned forever, basically. So, anyway, so then there would be an opportunity before God's wrath, which may be a couple years. Uh, I don't know exactly how long it's going to be. Maybe two, three years. I don't know. But before God's wrath finally happens, where He pours out all His wrath, he, um, the, then the sec or the third rapture will happen with the remaining uh, children of God that have come to Him, and they will be taken up. At that point, or anybody who's a child of God at that point will be taken up, and hopefully they've changed their hearts and minds, um, so they can get rewards and and uh, and all that. So anyway, uh, that's what I'm prophesying. Basically, there will be three raptures, and as far as the distance between each other, I don't know um, exact details. There could be little raptures here and there of people or whatever. I don't know, um, and other things, other details. I won't talk about, but I will say. I could speculate about different things for sure, but I'm not going to this right now. But I will say there are going to be three raptures, um, and that's why there's such a you know difference in beliefs of pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib. I mean all this kind of stuff because there's evidence of a lot of this stuff in the Bible, and so people go, oh, I'm going to this evidence, I'm going to this evidence, but it, it actually points to these three different raptures, um, and it's very clear. The Lord's made it super clear to me that that is what it is. And he does it for reasons. He gives people different chances to wake up. For example, the first rapture with the children, the parents will get a chance to, at first they won't lie, it'll be horrible, and then they'll reach, a lot of them will reach for God at that point. They will. And some people will be pissed off at God and angry at God, and but some will really reach out for God because they didn't, and they'll have an opportunity to go in the second rapture. And there will be people here like me and other people will say, hey, you know, your child was taken, but God wants you to go next. And they will say, sure, okay, please, uh, you know, and they will go and they will change and they will heal. And, um, but there'll be a lot of people that will be stuck here during the tribulation that will have to work out, work out the stuff in their heart. And that's what God wants. God doesn't want, um, a bunch of, uh, unhealed, selfish, childlike, uh, children of his children. He wants them to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling, like the Bible says. He wants them to grow up. He wants them to be like Christ and grow into being like Christ through walking with Christ. That's the whole point of all this stuff. The whole point of this life right now is to walk in Christ, to follow Christ, to learn Christ, to change your life and be more like Christ every day and not do your own thing. Okay, And need God, need Jesus every day. The next thing I'll say is we are, America is Mystery Babylon. God made that very clear to me years ago, especially after Barack Obama was elected for the first time and told me he was the Antichrist. And I, he didn't give me much detail at that time, but later he did. And he also told me at the same time that, and I was reading in Revelation, that Mystery Babylon is America and that it can only be America. There's only one sick, twisted place that's pervade its filth over the whole world, like America, nobody has even touched us. With all the filth that we've transported all over the world, it's just, it's horrible. Not to mention just sexual perversion. I mean, that's just one massive thing. Um, you know, music, movies, I mean, every kind of concept, um, evil concept out there that we move, move through music and movies, it's just, it's crazy. We are Mystery Babylon. And there's so many reasons for that. In fact, my brother Tim Foster talks about that as well in his videos. He's got some really comp awesome information, evidence about how we, uh, United States, is Ephraim. Um, it is uh, Joseph's um, tribe, our son Ephraim, and there's 
there was uh, Manasseh and Ephraim. Um, anyway, so am I saying that right? Anyway, we're we're Ephraim, and then Great Britain is uh, the other the other child that he had. Man, I'm I'm having a little bit of a brain uh, thing here, right? I can't remember exactly what I'm saying, but uh, a little bit tired. But here we go. So that that's America is mystery of Babylon, and it will be stored in one hour, and that's what I've been talking about for a long time. We have Donald Trump, okay, and I've shared this in many of my videos. Um, I have videos completely devoted to this idea that Donald Trump is not who you think a lot of Christians and conservatives think he is. He is not. He is a Trojan horse for Christianity and Jews. Um, he is a complete Trojan horse, okay? This guy is not, he's loved by the world. Um, he was supposedly until he became president, right? But he was very much loved by the world, as you can see, with his with entertainers and all this kind of stuff for a long time. Uh, but now he's like the guy who's hated by the world, right? Well, a lot of people do hate him because of things he said and everything. And there's some really bad things he said and I believe done for sure. Um, but a lot of Christians think he's doing the right things. And he is doing certain things right. At least it looks like that. It's to bait you in. It's to pull you in. Because you need someone to believe in right now. Because a lot of Christians and conservatives aren't going to Jesus. They're not going to God at all. Okay, they're not. But this guy, his whole thing, what he's put, been put on this earth to do has been not uh, lead every, but lead this country into World War III. Um, also, to blame Christians and Jews for World War III. So there's a massive amount of people that um, hate Christians and Jews because they believe that... Um, they followed Trump because, you know, he's the big, um, you know, the, you know, he's like King, uh, God, I'm losing, losing some of my train of thought here. I'm sorry. Uh, um, the, the King, man, I can't think of his name now, but anyway, there's a King that, um, basically saved the Jews at one point. Um, and, and so I'm sure a lot of people are going to put in comments who that is. I can't think of his name right now. Um, Cyrus, Cyrus. So Cyrus, he's like this new Cyrus. He's on these um, the coins and all this stuff is crazy. Um, but he is a Trojan horse. Okay. I'm telling you. And there's a lot of evidence out there that shows that. I mean, he was, he's an actor. I mean, he was a wrestler, um, fake stuff. You know, he's a bad guy and, you know, and all the stuff he was on the apprentice and that was all an act as well. You know, reality TV is not actuality. Reality TV is not actuality. It's, it's somewhat, it's hyped and it's changed. He was on Oprah Winfrey in the 80s. I mean, even before that, I've shown in my videos and stuff, he was primed to be this person. He's talking about being the president right here. I mean, he, this is 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago. It's crazy. Okay, this guy is completely um, a Trojan horse for Christians and conservatives. Okay, and for a reason. There's a number of reasons. I'm going to talk about that. And one of the main reasons is uh, because the Illuminati have a plan. They have a plan for the third world war to basically turn everything over to luciferianism and the belief in uh, worshiping lucifer okay and this is albert pike he's a general in the confederate army and as you can see he's a 33rd degree mason right here 33rd degree right there and then there's a there's the two-headed eagle uh, which is the mason eagle right there which is the 33rd degree mason with the crown above his head and he wrote a um he wrote a letter to a famous letter to Giuseppe. well not so famous but if you're if you understand some of this stuff is somewhat famous among these circles uh Giuseppe Mazzini uh, wrote a letter and basically stated in this letter that there would be three world wars and this is way before these world wars okay that this letter was written and it was in august 15th of 1871 in this letter and there you can read this you can pause this read this yourself but i will read this last about world war three the third world war must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agent tour of the illuminati between the political zionists and the leaders of the islamic world the war must be conducted in such a way that islam the Mo the muslim arabic world and political zionism the state of israel mutually destroy each other meanwhile the other nations once more divided on this issue will be constrained to fight to, to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. Okay, again, like that's what Trump's all about, to completely take down these people and, and this World War III that's coming. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, the origin of savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. Then, everywhere, the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will 
exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity, disillusioned with Christianity, whose deistic spirits will f from that moment be without comp compass or direction. So there, so socialism and Christianity will be destroyed, basically. You know, and these people will be without direction or any, any kind of compass, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render their its adoration will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement, which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. So this is a whole process from World War I, World War II, and World War III to eventually have everybody worship one Lucifer through one man, Barack Obama. Okay? And that's their that's their goal, and that's what they're going to achieve. And they will achieve this, okay? And it's shown again in the Tower card, which is a like I said a Trump card, and it shows here. It shows um, this socialism right here, or communism, socialism, communism, really. And then we have Christianity, and then even this shows like the foundation of Christianity, which is you know the the uh, Martin Luther's treatise on the door here and everything. And it's split with a lightning bolt, which is the symbol of the Antichrist, which Obama is a, the lightning bolt, lightning from falling from heaven, Barack Obama. And then the, I believe this is the 10, these are the 10 uh, trade regions, which also represent spikes or fire also. But this is crazy because this is one branch, which is social, uh, communism, and this one branch is Christianity, and it's broke down. But look at this, upside down, upside down, it's a lightning bolt and it's a pyramid. It's the pyramid that you see on like on the dollar bill and it's you know it's the it's all seeing eye in the top of the pyramid and everything but he's going to the top here um right here and this is the pyramid upside down which breaks apart these two um pillars basically right here um christianity and uh communism it's pretty crazy man this is their this is an intricate plan that's in a lot of different things i'm just showing you a few things right here um it's in these cards it's in so many different things it's but this this backs up what that letter says. That letter says backs up what this is showing. Um, it's pretty crazy. Okay, now the next thing I want to talk about. So that's coming. That is coming. Um, let me go back to this for a second. So what I'm saying is that communism or so and socialism slash socialism will be destroyed, and so will Christianity through Trump and through people's belief in these saviors and these ideas of conservatism, conservatism and everything. And like he said, they'll be disillusioned without compass. And then here comes the pure light of Lucifer and the doctrine of Lucifer, basically, to save the day. And how are they going to save the day? They're going to save the day with these guys. Who are these guys? Well, this is an example of what is coming. And these are synthetic slash Nephilim slash different things that are blended into them. And they're printed. There will be beings that will be printed. They, they are, exist right now in, in CERN three three uh, story printers that are biological printers you've heard of biological printers that can print uh you know a heart a liver now and all that kind of stuff that's been in the news imagine printing a whole body that's ready for a spiritual host that's ready to be possessed once um it's ready and once the abyss opens up and these more spirits come through and they can be possessed and there'll be these these uh aliens that'll look like us kind of kind of a little bit and then this idea that's been promoted in movies like this movie um uh prometheus and these are creatures that are basically seeded all these different planets with these different um creatures like aliens from the movie aliens alien aliens and all these different alien movies um those are warlike aliens that they've created apparently right and then this is, there's an event here where this, well, let me show you here. This is Ridley Scott, who's the director. He's really into this idea of this, it's called panspermia. And here, there's that sperm thing again, right? And they're, they're obsessed by the sperm and the phallic symbol and all that stuff. But the sperm is what, you know, seeds this new life. And so, you know, this is a Ridley Scott movie, Prometheus. And by that, so there's a cyborg dude. Um, anyway, and then here's this tall giant thing. And by the way, that's in the Bible, Nephilim giants. And they've seeded the planet, our planet, and other planets with their technology and their seed. In fact, the, this guy right here in the movie is dropped off in this really primitive form of the Earth. 
and he opens his file thing or whatever and then he starts getting this thing infects him and then he just dissolves if you haven't seen the movie he dissolves and then his components go into the water and that seeds the earth for humanity to start from you know from this ooze or this sludge or this you know primordial ooze whatever it is all the way evolving up to you know man and then eventually the first god which is a barack obama the perfect man you know give me a break um, who's worshipped like a god and it's in media and all over the place where he's worshipped and he has a halo of his head and all this stuff. It's crazy. Um, but these aliens, they're pushing this alien thing all over. In fact, there's just one guy, Ridley Scott, that, I'm, that showed you there, that the Prometheus, he has this um, uh, little, I don't know, it's a few minute commercial for Hennessy Cognac. It's just crazy. And there's these big gods and they're gold, they're golden gods. You know, right? And then again, these are just like their other, he's uh, similar to his other characters, you know, these guys here that he created, right? He does this thing for this cognac, just so they can put this idea out there more in people's subconscious, more in people's brains. I mean, the idea of aliens and panspermia and, you know, alien seeding life, and all that, it's just, it's grown and grown and grown and grown. It's huge. And more people believe in aliens than even Jesus even existed. And now, and even Christians and stuff, it's just crazy. Um, and so, you know, this is going into the golden age, by the way, of, um, of these giants. And that's what Nephilim were. They were giants, um, you know, before the man that we know of right now, um, and the fall of angels, fallen angels and stuff, um, that basically formed a lot of these mega, mega monoliths and all these mega cities and stuff that were all over the world that we see, you know, all these, uh, all this, um, uh, this archaeology that's that proves that human beings didn't do it. It's too complex. I'm trying to think of all the names, but there's places in you know um, South America and there's all over the world where these ma these crazy structures and with these massive stones that are too big for anybody to have ever moved without you know super sophisticated technology from from these aliens or from the from these angels that came down as um, men basically, and they were giants basically. So anyway. Um, he shows these creatures as basically uh, metaphorically giving shade to the people when there's these tornadoes and it's all dry and everything. They're giving shade to the people. They're causing these demons in, behind people are causing all this, these crazy, this crazy weather and you know, whether it's hot or cold or whatever, it's just crazy. And then there's these, here's these savior, uh, you know, uh, giants. I'm losing some of my th train of thought here. Sorry. Um, but these all these giants, this is crazy. I mean, this is nuts. Here they are. There's these giants. I mean, and they kind of look humanoid, right? So they're, you know, they're that's where we come from. So this whole idea that what's coming is one person will leave this when these events start happening, like the children leaving and, and different things, and then eventually when the body of Christ leaves, the bride of Christ, um, then they'll have to explain all this, and they'll have to have things set up already. And so aliens will be introduced um, into this the idea um, and here's Reagan for example who already introduced this idea a long time ago in the 80s and he said at the UN this is the backdrop at the UN he's at the UN he said perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bond I occasionally think that how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world Ronald Reagan I mean are you kidding me He's basically saying what's telling you ahead of time, predictively programming what's coming, these aliens that are coming, to bring the whole world into one idea, this Luciferianism. You know, the World War III will bring everybody into Luciferianism and the disappearance of first the children, up to age accountability, and then um, the Bride of Christ will be taken. And then they'll be like, oh, these probably, they'll probably say these bad aliens came and took us off, and then we're the good aliens, and we're here to stop you know stop you from warning each other and you're going to give you this technology like the mark and we're gonna and you're gonna live forever like us and you know we seeded you and they're gonna come out with all this and the catholic church is going to come with all this evidence that this is how it happened okay i'm telling you this is what's going to happen in a nutshell basically i mean without the, knowing all the details exactly this is what's coming so you will see aliens appear and false ships and these the ships you will see probably close to you will be real ships with technology that the, the elite have that is 50 years beyond what we have but the ones you'll see way up in the sky they'll be projected um and they won't be completely real okay this is the big hallucination now this is a big uh 
production that they're going to have at some point to get everybody to follow one re one world religion, one world government. Okay, that's all coming. I'm prophesying all that. And here's Trump's Space Force. I mean, why is Trump doing a Space Force at this time anyway? I mean, uh, what? I mean, I, I, are any of you paying attention to this? The Space Force? This is kind of a silly comic about it. But, I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, the timing on this is, couldn't be any more planned. I mean, we have a Space Force? For what? I mean, are you kidding? But this is all going to come... It's all going to come together on all this stuff that I'm saying. You know, this is why Trump has a Space Force. I mean, whoever... Who's going, oh, we need a Space Force? I mean, for what? It's crazy. This is crazy. Some of the crazy reasons, but... You know, it'll all come together at some point. You're going to see why they've been planning this for such a long time. And disclosure about aliens is is pretty much on the way. You know, and I mean, the Catholic Church is training cardinals and bishops about how to integrate aliens with human culture and everything. I mean, that's going on, I'm telling you. Okay, so as far as timing on this, I'm just going to speculate here about a possible timing. Okay, I'm telling you, I'm prophesying to you. What I believe, I'm just telling you what God's told me about these specific subjects, about, you know, the Barack Obama is the Antichrist, Pope Francis is the false prophet, Planet X is almost here, where we'll actually see it. It's actually, you'll probably see it now, but it's all covered up with chemtrails and these huge lenses that are in space and stuff that we, we can't, bends light around the objects and everything, and all this other stuff. I tell you about the, you know, the three raptures that are coming. America is Babylon, Donald Trump is a, uh, you know, he's a, he's false and he's going to be he's going to be the reason that Christians and Jews are blamed for World War III and everything. And then we have aliens and you know, and I've been talking about when might this all start? When might these massive tsunamis, like I believe, will start everything? These massive tsunamis will start it. Well, like my brother is speculating about what based on some dreams, which you should check out his channel, please. Um, and that video I have in this uh, link in the description box, check out his channel here. And that video and some other things he's done since then. He has some amazing dreams. I've had some amazing dreams. My daughter has. My wife has. I mean, you know, God is working overtime in our lives to show us things that are coming. And they're almost here. And so, based on, like I said, iPad Go, when this goes dark, she drops the apple, that's when this stuff starts. Um, but here's the lit up um, bunny, the white rabbit, which, again, represents the white rabbit, you know, like in... Um, Alice in Wonderland, follow the white rabbit, follow the rabbit, right, down the rabbit hole, which is basically saying, hey, we're going to a strange place. Um, and the rabbit is lit up in the dark, and here's the, like, nuclear red war with the exit building, or exit door. And I believe this is possibly showing now. Now, let me show you here. Um, and this is probably, maybe maybe the last time I'm going to talk about any of this, but I don't know, maybe. Um, I'm just going to leave it open a little bit. But um, last year... April 1st, so you got, you got, you know, Easter's, it was April 1st, there's Easter bunny, right? And his ears touching one leaf, so that's April 1st. And then this year, and I've shown in, the, and you look at any of my videos, I've had go to solved, um, uh, part one, part two, part three, part four, I talk about, um, how some of these scenes represent, uh, 2017 and 2018. Now I believe this scene represent might may represent 2017 2018 and 2019 overlaid with each other and so there's several so for example this might be the first of april but then i think this could also be april two ears because this ear was touching for april 1st and then we're looking at the ear so it could represent two two ears and then this one uh pink area as the inside of the ear which not this ear is different than this one why is this open to the pink side of the in in the ear and this one's not um, so this could be tw two and then one, 21, which would be April 21st, which is Easter this year. And last year it was April 1st, touching one leaf. And then these leaves over here were going into May. And there was eight leaves that, like J.K. Bugout pointed out, there's eight leaves in May. And May 8th was a big event that happened at 2 p.m. Anyway, and that's all in there. And this was the timeline for 2018. And I believe it's very possibly 2018 and 2019. Okay, and this may be the actual event that happens on um, Easter this year, which is also, which I don't think it's about Easter, but it's it was just a representation. It's a physical kind of a symbolic representation, but Easter is also right in the time time frame or right on the day of first fruits, the uh, feast of first fruits, and first fruits um, was when. Uh, 
you know, Jesus went up into heaven on the third day on first fruits. So he was the first fruits unto God and he was the head of the body. And then the, the body of Christ or the real, the real body of Christ or the bride of Christ is going to marry Jesus in heaven is the body of the head. And it's going to go up on first fruits also, I believe is very possible. And I'm just saying that's possible. I'm not prophesying that. I'm saying, I'm speculating about that. I don't know the future. God hasn't shown me this future on this kind of stuff. And, and he showed me the future on some of the stuff that's going to happen. He didn't tell me when and, and exactly how, okay, on a lot of this stuff. Um, and that's, those are for reasons. Jesus doesn't show this stuff for reasons. A lot of reasons. So we don't like just give up and just wait on that time and do nothing. I mean, for example, my job right now that I'm doing, I minister to people and I pray for people every day. Um, and I change this job because the Lord is showing me to go into this other thing. Um, I'm working more hours, but I'm able to pray and minister to people at times and stuff. And I'm doing what I can while I'm still here. I'm not just waiting on it. Um, some people, if you're waiting on this stuff, th that's seriously a mistake. You better be listening to Jesus every day, every moment, as much as you can. And I'm not saying I'm doing, I'm not perfect, you know. I'm doing the best I can every day to, you know, provide for my family, live, live for my family, but also live for God and Jesus every day, every day. Um, doing the best I know and walk in faith and do what he shows me. So he showed me to move this other job and to minister to different people when, when he shows me and stuff. And until the time we're taken away, whenever that is. And I'm just trying to help you out speculating. Um, and, and I'm mainly doing what Jesus is telling me. So if it doesn't help you out, I can't, I'm sorry, but, or if it does help you out, praise God, it does help you out. But I'm doing everything I know to do that Jesus is showing me. And when he tells me, tells me, don't do this, I don't do it. When he tells me, do this, I do that. When he tells me, shut up, I shut up. When he tells me to talk, I talk. Okay, there's many times in my life where I didn't do that. And I've learned over time to do more and more of what he's showing me. And I'm getting better at it, thankfully. But that's the best any of us can do. Okay, now this is crazy on the timing. So we're talking about, I was talking about, you know, Easter time frame, which is a very possibly... Um, you know, first fruits. Okay, and then here's Trump and Netanyahu and U.S. to present Mideast peace plan after Israeli vote, Jared Kushner says. Some people think Jared Kushner's the Antichrist, but he doesn't fit a lot of it. Um, but he's definitely evil. There's no doubt. He's definitely moving uh, Satan's plans to an end. Um, not a good end. Um, and then, so that's when their election is, um, Tuesday, April 9th, the Knesset election this year. And then the, he said the peace plan is going to be sometime after that. Well, it just so happens that about 12 days after that, it could be around the same time frame, maybe April 21st is Easter, or it lines up completely with the, you know, first fruits. Okay, that's crazy. Like my brother said, like I'm saying, like the Lord, I think it's possibly shown us as a very possible thing. And then check this out. And then, of course, Israel, last May 14th of 2018, was 70 years old and they've said it we're 70 we're israel at 70 years right well that 70th year lasts from may 14 2018 to may 14 2019 and i i i think this is what i'm saying as i'm speculating that we are looking possibly between april 9th and may 14th 2019 is the possible start uh, these mega tsunamis and then going to all this other stuff I mentioned. Now, I don't know the timing on all that. Of course, like I said, I don't even know the beginning. But I'm just speculating at this point. And whatever that means to you, whatever you can do with that, do, you know, if it helps you to get closer to Jesus, do that. And whatever you need to do, Jesus is your only way out of this. He's your only chance. This is all collapsing. I mean, China and Russia are going to take this country over. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, there's so much evidence of that, and we are on the verge of World War III every day. It's so close. It, 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 every day, I, I, I'm amazed each day how much closer we are to World War III. It blows my mind. And how Venezuela's part of this. By the way, Venezuela and Jumatria is 666, so they keep saying it all the time. They're talking about it. Trump's talking about it every time. About it. They're saying 666, 666, 666, because that's, that's what's coming. Um, and Venezuela... The whole thing about Venezuela is not what it really appears to be. They they want to take it over because it's a threat. And it also could be a very big point of World War III. Um, so anyway, it's you know, like kind of like you know the Korean War, the Vietnam War. 
we're going to have the Venezuelan War. I mean, who knows? Um, it may be the beginning of World War III, how it starts over on this side of the world. And then we're going to have the um, Israel slash, you know, Iran, you know, war over there on that side of the world, part of World War III as well. So, I mean, I don't know the future. Like I said, I don't even know a lot of these details, but I'm doing the best I can to show you, hey, this is, we're so close to a lot of things and these things are coming. The things I've mentioned that are going to happen are going to happen. Thus says Jesus. Thus says Jesus. Thus says the Lord. And take how you want. Uh, but I'm, like I said, I'm not prophesying the time frame, the timing, the dates. I'm not. I don't know when that's going to be. I wish I did know in a way. In a way, maybe I guess I don't. But um, so anyway, um, I'm going to leave it at that. And this is Exalted Lamb 1 over and out.